G'day everyone and welcome to week one, session one of your marathon strength program. Today's session is going to consist of two components. You have a strength component which is six exercises done in supersets. So that's two exercises paired up with a recovery in between sets, moving on to your next two and then your next two after that. We'll then move on to a conditioning circuit which is going to be a series of five or six exercises done in a circuit followed by a rest and then repeated for a total amount of sets. Let's get started. Before we get started with the strength component of this workout, it's important to get a nice strong warm up in. Warm ups are super important. They're important for lubricating your joints as well as firing up your nervous system. On the main section of this program is a section called warm ups and there's a series of warm up routines that you can follow or you can go for your best warm up routine that you like and mix it all up. Our first movement today is a goblet squat. Goblet squats are great for developing strength in your quadricep muscles and your glutes. Your glutes are that powerhouse muscle that you need when you're going through your runs and your quads play a huge role when it comes to stabilizing every time you hit the ground. How do you do a goblet squat? Not too hard at all. So if you're using a kettlebell, reverse the kettlebell, go bottoms up and then get your feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart. Angle your feet out a little bit, so rotate your feet out. And the reason for this is we're creating room for your hips, so your hips don't pinch up as you go into your squat. From here, we just need to time our breathing in conjunction with our reps. So as you go down into your rep, you're gonna breathe in, you're gonna hold your breath, and then you're gonna breathe out and come back up. It's a nice controlled repetition for two seconds going down and two seconds coming back up. A total of eight repetitions per set and a total of three sets, but you'll be supersetting this with your next movement. Good. Making sure you're lowering down, nice low control, and then coming back up. It's important that you keep your weight on your heels when you do a goblet squat, so don't track forwards and get onto your tiptoes. Stay strong through your heels. It allows you to activate your quads better. Perfect, and have a rest. Our second movement today is a high step up. We're gonna be using a bench for our step up. At home, using a step or a nice firm sofa will do the trick as well. The key thing here is to get the height in the step up. And the reason for that is so we can get our glute firing nice and well. Amrit's gonna start off. He's gonna put his right leg up onto the step. And we're gonna push up through the right leg and elevate and hold this top position here. Key thing here when you hold the position at the top is to engage your glute and really get that squeeze and then coming back down. Good. Once again, breathing is super important. Big breath in, breathe out and push out. The way we're gonna do our step ups today is we're gonna do 12 reps on one side followed by 12 reps on the other side. Then comes in that 60 second rest break. Following the 60 second rest break, you're gonna move back into the goblet squats, back into a set of step ups and the 60 second rest break and then repeat it for the total prescribed dosage. Follow the PDF for long to know exactly what the dosage is if you're missing out over here. Brilliant, and have a rest. Our third exercise for today's strength program is a glute bridge. The way you're gonna perform your glute bridge is you're gonna get your feet nice and flat against the ground, so bending your knees, brilliant. And you wanna make sure you have a nice straight line transitioning from your hip down to your knees and down to your ankles. So shoulder width apart through the movement, pushing through your heels and then lifting off. Good, slow control movement going up, making sure you're holding your bridge at the top for a second before you draw back down again. And it's crucial when you're doing a glute bridge that you're not hyper extending your back, so you're stopping when you can feel the back extended, but you're not trying to take it further than that. The action of the movement has to come from the glutes. So we're trying to build strength in your glute max. Once again, that nice powerhouse muscle, especially if you're running up hills. Nice. Make sure you're not holding your breath as well. So breathing in as you go up, breathing out as you come back down. Good. Just making sure your breathing has nice rhythm. And that's so important with running because when you're running, you want nice rhythmic breathing as well. Brilliant, one more rep and we'll have a rest. The next movement in this combo is a bent over row. Whilst a bent over row is an upper body movement, it's so important to develop upper body strength as a runner because you use what we call anatomical slings when you run. So as you extend your hand back, that works in conjunction with the opposite glute and hip. So building upper body strength has to be something all runners should partake in. 
this bend over row, what you need to start off with is going into what's called a hinge position. So you're gonna hinge back, you're gonna stick your bottom back and just have a look at Amrit over here as he's hinged back. He's stuck his bottom back, his back is nice and flat and neutral and he's maintained a really, really nice vertical shin line over here. So he's not sticking his knees back. Once you're in this position, before you get rowing, you wanna just get a nice gentle activation of your shoulder blades, just squeezing and hoovering it up a little bit and then bending the elbows to row and then controlling against gravity on the way down. So big breath in as you row up, breathe out as you row down. Lovely, good. Keep that hinge position, keep your core and your back really tight. So you can see how this starts to get really beneficial for you as a runner. Back's gotta stay nice and tight, core's gotta stay really involved. So a lot of these muscles that you work with running get activated as you're doing a row. Brilliant, couple more reps there. Good stuff. What we've got here is 5% body weight on either side. If this is too easy for you, you can take it up. Brilliant, and have a rest. You can come back up. The way you'll do this exercise is you'll go for your sets and reps as prescribed, go into your 60 second break, follow it up for the next routine. So you're gonna combine that glute bridge with the row for the total sets and reps. Our next sequence involves two movements. The first movement here is a split squat. Split squats are great. They build up strength in your quads, your hamstrings, but also your glutes. But the reason I love split squats is because they're really, really replicable when it comes to locomotion, moving, running. You're in a position which is very similar to when you're driving as you run through. So getting yourself into a split position, you can start with either leg forwards or back because you'll just alternate as you go through. The key thing here is to make sure you're getting a good step back, so you don't wanna to be too shallow with your step. But if you go too far back, you'll start to feel a stretch through the front of your hip flexor. And if that's the case, just draw your foot in a little bit. The other thing to be mindful of when you're doing this movement here is a nice distance between your feet. You don't wanna to be too narrow, you're gonna lose your balance. Once you've got your startup position right, like Amrit has, you can go into your movement, dropping the back leg and as you come down, creating a 90 degree angle at the back leg, but also at the front. The key element here is to push through the front leg through your heel. So drive that heel into the ground and then push up, making sure you're engaging your quads on the way. Brilliant. 12 reps on each side for two sets, but making sure that you're completing one set, moving on to the next movement prior to the second set. Perfect, and have a rest. The second movement in this sequence is a straight leg heel raise. The straight leg heel raise biases your gastroc muscle. So you have two calf muscles. You have your gastroc, which is the two beautiful bellies you can normally see. So you can see these two beautiful calf bellies, that's your gastroc. The smaller muscle is your soleus, which won't be activated as much in this variation of the calf raise. So nice straight leg calf raise. By that, we mean keeping your knee straight and they're gonna be single leg with this one over here. Pushing through the ball of your big toe. Imagine you got a coin under the ball of your big toe and you're trying to push that in. And the reason for that is you're getting a nice even activation of the inside and the outside bellies of the muscle. If a single leg variation is too much for you, you can start double leg. So don't feel like you have to stick to what's going on over here. Do as much as you can tolerate. Good. Brilliant. And have a rest. Once you've completed this set, you move into your 60 second recovery, back into the split squats, and then into the calf raises again. Follow it along for the entire duration and that's dosed up. And then you've got your PDF that works with that as well for you. So we've completed the strength component of session one. We're gonna move into the conditioning component. Conditioning is about elevating your heart rate, getting these muscles firing. And if you think about when you're running a marathon, you're in your race, you're tw kilometers 25, 30, really getting into the business end of your race. You want the conditioning to kick in to get you to the finish line in the time that you're after. So today's conditioning circuit involves five movements. We're gonna go through how to do those five movements first. And then the way you'll do it is you'll run through the circuit for all five movements. 
you'll get your rest recovery period and then you'll repeat the circuit once over. So trying to really be nice and sharp and snappy with this, get your rest break and then repeat that with the same intensity so you're getting your heart rate elevated in this section of the workout. The first movement in the circuit is a front plank. So lowering down onto the ground, onto your elbows. So what you wanna make sure when you're in your front plank is that you're engaging your shoulder blades, you're nice and strong through there. You're making sure your bottom is not too far up or not too far down and you're keeping a nice control position through your lower back. Most importantly, engaging and bracing that core gently. When I say gently, you have to be able to maintain this position, but make sure you're breathing at the same time, not holding your breath. After we finish the front plank, we're gonna move into the dead bug. So going on to your back for this exercise and getting yourself into what's called tabletop position. So hands up, legs up, making sure your back is nice and flat. We're not arching our back away from the ground. And once again, in this position, holding your starting position without bracing and not breathing. So making sure breathing is happening at all times because it's kind of essential, isn't it? So with this version of the dead bug, we're gonna be doing heel taps. Just tapping the heel down gently and back down. Slow, controlled. As you're doing that, the key thing is not to arch your back. So keeping that back nice and flat, keeping your core engaged as you have moving limbs. Think about how this is very similar to what you'll be doing with running. Brilliant, like I said, make sure your back stays nice and flat. Make sure you're not extending the leg out here. You wanna keep the variation controlled. The emphasis is on technique whilst we're keeping the heart rate going. So nice, slow, controlled movements, brilliant. We're gonna move into our third movement, which is a walking heel raise. So we're gonna stand up for this exercise here. The walking heel raise is gonna get your calf, but get stability as well. So you're gonna walk through, you're gonna take a step forwards, move into a heel raise. So when you're ready, Amrit, beautiful, small steps, getting onto your toes. That's it, control at the top before you bring your heel back down. What you don't wanna do is lose your balance at the top and then slow, quickly bring your leg back down. So nice control movements, really small steps here. Good, brilliant. From this movement, we're gonna move into our bird dog or our Superman exercise. So going into what we call four point kneeling, so onto your palms and your knees. In this position, you want to make sure that you're keeping the back nice and neutral. The best way to get that position is to sag your bottom down all the way and then just gently lift up on your lower back a little bit, good. And you got a nice neutral position, the lower back and the core are both engaged. From here, opposite hand and leg extensions at the same time. Good, and then control through. Making sure your lower back is still. So if I was resting a glass of water over here, your objective is to keep that glass of water here without spilling over. Brilliant. Once again, make sure you're breathing and not excessively bracing. From here, we're gonna go into our final movement, which is a sideline hip raise. So for that, you'll just need to bring a foam roller or, or, or a, an object that you can use to give you some guidance. So going into sideline position, you wanna start with both legs bent and then extend the top leg and just pop your roller in front of that top leg. And what that does there is it stops your leg from moving forwards and taking away from the glutes in this exercise, which is what should be doing the work, and it stops your hip flexor from compensating, which is most commonly what we'll see with this movement. Your top hand is going to sit onto your glute and it's gonna push forwards, and that's gonna allow you to keep a really nice, still hip pelvis position. Lifting up, and then making sure your leg tracks back behind the roller. If you feel like your leg is touching the roller, that's your cue just to extend your hip back a little bit. Keep your glute firing and engaged. Don't be deceived by how the hard this exercise is. Slow control movement is crucial over here. If you speed up, you're gonna rotate your hip, you're gonna take away from your glute muscle. And we want time under tension here because if you think about your marathon, that's a lot of steps, a lot of time. I'm never gonna be able to replicate the sets and reps. So tensioning the movement, super, super important. Brilliant. With that being said, let's get into the circuit so you can see it in real time now. Okay guys, so get ready. We're gonna start the circuit in three, two, one. Getting down into front plank. 30 seconds over here, holding that position. Brilliant, good work, Amrit. Making sure back's nice and tight, course tight, keeping your breathing. Don't elevate your bottom, good. Keep working through, doing really well. 
Nice gentle breathing. Good stuff. Doing really well, mate. Almost there. That's it. Keep it up. If you feel like you're going to lose your position, guys, you can always stop a bit earlier. Go three, two, one, and then coming up for me into dead bug. So going onto your back, getting into tabletop over here. Good. And we're going to go for a total of 12 reps. So nice and slow and controlled. Keep the control there. Good. Nice. Make sure your back is nice and flat here. Good. That's five. Good. Control. Nice and slow on the way up. Slow on the way down. Gentle tap. Nice. And back up. Gentle tap. Back up. Good. Four more. Beautiful. Good. Couple more. Let's finish strong. Good. Nice stuff. And we're going to go into that walking raise now. Brilliant. So keeping sure with walking raise, nice small steps. 30 seconds starting now and go. Good, really getting to the ball of the big toe, controlling the drop, focus on balance, stability, as well as getting that explosion going up. Brilliant, let's keep working. That's it, get your hands to work through, hold at the top there. Get your best ballerina impersonation going on. Good. Nice one. Almost there, mate. Doing really well. Keep it up. Three, two, one. Perfect. And we're going to go into Supermans. Perfect. So with the Supermans, first start getting with your neutral back. Sag down, push up a little bit. And we're going to go opposite hand leg. Good. One. Good. Two. Brilliant. Twelve of these in total. That's three. Nice. Remember guys to keep your back nice and still over here. Imagine you've got to balance that glass of water. Good. Nice. Three more. Good stuff. And one last one. Brilliant. And we're going to finish off with the sideline glute raiser. So going onto your side, get your roller and keep it handy. And make sure you just slot that roller just in front of the leg so you don't take that leg into flexion going forwards. Hand on your hip to stabilize the glutes, straighten out the knee. We can go for eight reps on one side. That's one. Good. Keep the hip stable. Two. That's it. Just to my hand. Three. Good. Four. Control the drop. Don't go down too fast. Nice. Good. Couple more. Good. Slow down the drop. Nice work, and then swapping sides. So I'm gonna bring the roller onto the other side. Good stuff, bend the top leg, get the roller in front of the rear leg. And we're gonna go again for the final set. Good. Two, keep that hip still. Three, nice. Four. Five, good, three more. Let's go, finish strong. Beautiful, last one, control the drop. Brilliant, and that's one round of the circuit. Two minute recovery, and I'm gonna rinse and repeat the whole circuit once again. Well done everyone, that caps off session one of the program. Make sure to follow along with the cool down routines and mobilizations in the cool down section. You can do the cool downs immediately afterwards if you have the time, but if you're strapped for time, just do it later in the night. So blend it into a bit of TV time with the family. Don't look at this as something that takes away from your day. Hope you've enjoyed and see you in session two.